Paul Berger. I'm the Vice President uh, and R&D Director for Wellcam Technologies in Sugarland, Texas. And our company is uh, dealing with uh, re oil recovery, recovering uh, additional oil from wells that have been uh, abandoned or, or depleted in uh, original oil and uh, abandoned by major oil companies. And about two-thirds of the oil is still left behind. And we can use various chemical processes to recover this oil. It's a little like a detergent, uh, in a way, to wash the oil out of the ground, but uh, it's a super detergent in that it's about 10,000 to 100,000 times as effective as the uh, detergents you might use to get soil off of your uh, clothing in a washing machine. And the other difference is that the oil is trapped in, uh, in very small, minute pores in the rock they're not, uh, the oil doesn't occur in a pool like people might think on the ground. And so we have to penetrate the, these pores, enter these pores, and displace the oil with the solution that we're uh, introducing to the, to the reservoir. We're using uh, green uh, renewable resource type uh, chemicals now, and we're also uh, improved the amount, the economics, so that it is very feasible if the oil price is $40 or or more, it's uh, very, very economical to recover this oil. And actually, it could recover as much oil as all the oil that's ever been uh, recovered uh, in the history of the, of the petroleum industry, because they only do recover one-third of the oil, and we could recover another one-third. The advantage is that uh, those um, wells are already existing. They, they already, uh, people have already evaluated the wells. They know the oil is there. The uh, infrastructure is there, like the tanks and the, uh, the roads, so that it's very inexpensive to go back and revitalize those wells with a little chemical and get the oil out, rather than to risk the environmental issues and the expense of uh, exploring for a new well. We're using uh, renewable resources, we're using uh, fatty acids that are derived from crops that you grow here in Canada, and they grow in uh, Malaysia and in uh, India, such as the canola uh, oil crops that you use here. So we. Uh, Right now, the reason we're at this conference is that we're working with some of the research institutes here to develop uh, strains of crops that are enriched in certain fatty acids that we use to recover the oil. What we're trying to do is take the uh, types of uh, chemicals that are used to make biodiesel and make these small surfactant molecules that can be used at very low levels in existing oil wells and then for every barrel of these biodiesel materials, we can get 60 barrels of oil out. So it's a very, very good trade-off as far as energy and expense goes. David Taylor's group, uh, NRC. Yeah, yeah, right, is the main group that we're working with right now. They're doing a lot of genetic engineering to come up with crops that uh, are enriched in certain acids that we would use so that the cost and the yields would be much more effective. Of course, huge quantities will be required to to, uh, for each project of these materials. It's quite a, quite a large uh, undertaking, like the projects in Asia that we're using use, uh, you know, several a million pounds of product every month, let's say. But they recover uh, 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 60 times that, 60 million pounds of oil for one million pounds of material. And the nice things about the, the, the bio-based products are that we make, they can uh, be added to any kind of so water solution because you don't want to use uh, very good potable water or very, you know, because you have this water that either they can take from the formation and recycle, or they could use seawater if they're on the, uh, outside in the uh, offshore, and they add the chemical to it. Most chemicals are not, not compatible with these things, but these type are these agricultural products that we make, and therefore the added to the seawater at very low levels, like 0.1%, and you inject it into the reservoir where the oil is, and what they do is the, the surfactant that's in there uh, reduces the amount of energy required to penetrate these small surfaces in the reservoir by about 10,000 times. And therefore, it, the water is allowed to penetrate into the reservoir and displace the oil and push it out to another well on the other side of the uh, reservoir, like a big pipeline in a way. The oils are usually... Uh, they're, they're triglycerides, okay? And the triglycerides are glycerin and a fatty acid. And so we use the fatty acid material to convert to certain chemicals that we have patented that are very effective. The glycerin can be used on its own as a byproduct, or can in some cases be left in the product and it doesn't harm the product any, and it gives some uh, 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 temperature resistance where we're using it in cold climates like in Canada, it would be a little antifreeze properties that would be imported to the formulation so it has some use there.
majority of our projects are in, in, in Asia and in Canada. Uh, we have uh, projects in Manitoba and uh, we have projects in uh, uh, Alberta is the, the majority of our projects and also some of our projects in Alberta use chemicals to get heavy oil out of the ground without using steam or uh, solvents. So we hope we can uh, apply this type of technology to like tar sands mm -hmm. here in, uh, uh, in this province so that we can uh, get the uh, tar sands out without having to mine it as they do over there in, uh, in Alberta. Cameline is very good and that's one of the ones we are working with here to try to get a larger uh, potential yield of that material from the laboratory studies it looks great so what we're concerned with is can we get it grown economically and in the quantities that we need and if that's the case then it would be great and uh, right now uh, we usually take those crops and we get the oil from Canada and bring it into the States and then process it and then send it back to Canada. It'd be nice if we could process it here and that's something we've been asked by our customers, by several oil companies, can we produce the product here in Canada? So we're seeing if uh, uh, enough of them, we have enough business from enough of these oil uh, companies to gener you know, to justify a plant that would be operating 24 hours. You make very good raw materials, but you don't put the value added to it. You send it to somewhere else and then it comes back and you pay for it rather than make it here, right? It'd be great because you do have a, you know, educated populace here. You don't have to go outside for people that can run these plants. Right. So.